It's much cheaper and better for the environment if you put a big old fat energizer on your barn and run steel wires wherever you need electricity. Sometimes it just doesn't work for the operation. So you buy a setup like this. How much is the setup, Christian? Too much. Three, 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 three. <laughs> 300. Okay, uh, it's more than that. Um, so what he's got here, he's got a stay fix. Yeah, he's got a stay fix X one energizer. That means it has one joule. How many feet of fence we got here? Three hundred and twenty. Is that all? Uh, one thing we have four, right? So it's six hundred feet of fence here. That's Well, whatever it is, it's a lot. It's three times one hundred and sixty. We're going three fences. Yeah. Okay. Four fences. Just four fences. Four sides. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't been out here in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. so, so it's about 600 feet of fence. And if I want a half a joule per 100 feet, how many joules do I really want out here? Three. I want three joules. One will work if you do everything right. I just like to kind of be a little overpowered. Can't tell. So, so Matt, we're way underpowered. What's the downside? What, what... So, so after we clean up all the wires and stuff, we've got a voltage here of 3.3. That's pretty good. Now, now that's in thousands. Okay, 3.3 thousands, so 3,300 volts. So that is actually adequate. Now, if we go to the other, if we go to that corner and measure it, I bet you it's going to be a fair amount lower because we're going to have voltage drop by the time we get over there. Okay. So, but, I mean, if the hens are staying in, it's working. Well, let, let's talk. So, like his question, adequate for the hens or for the predators coming down? Oh, that's a good question. Adequate yes. for hens or predators? Some predators don't care about fences. Okay, so our biggest predator in East Texas is skunks, and they're so insulated and skinny, they can just crawl right underneath. So right underneath. They never even know there's a fence there. Anything that's wild. Oftentimes, if they're walking animals, they will they will cautiously approach the fence, and you need their first experience with a fence to feel like a two by four. So you got to have a hot fence. Like I mean, animal training is everything here, and you only get animal training by people training. Okay, so we have a rule on our farm: I have no tolerance for off fences. Okay, and 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 I say that, except for when I do. <laughs> you know? So, so we really do try to keep those fences hot if any animals are exposed to it. Um, so it's very important. To, I mean, if a predator gets in once, he slowly walked up, thought about it, sniffed around the fence, and if he didn't get shocked and got over it, the next time he comes out, you think he's going to take that much time? He's getting over fast that second time. And that second time, the fence might be on. But he doesn't even know because he was over it before it shocked him because this fence only pulses once a second. And they can also feel it in their feet too. They have padded feet like dogs and guard dogs. Sometimes. They can feel the induction from the ground coming Sometimes. up through their pads, yep. pads it's, if it's high enough. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. Thank yeah. you. I forgot about this earlier. Okay, so we got a ground rod here. Everybody see what the ground rod's made out of? Rebar. Rebar. Listen. It's talking to us. It's ticking. Yeah. It's talking to us. It's, it's sparking between that between that ground and the ground. And the reason, a couple reasons. Number one, that rebar. What's it look like? Rusted. Rusted. Rusted and oxide. It's iron oxide. Iron oxide does not like or does not transfer electricity very well. Um, so I can. Okay. So just the circus trick. Everybody ready? Three thousand volts. I can feel it. Doesn't really hurt. But I can feel it and I can measure it. Now, the more I let up on it, the more I can feel it. So I'm, I'm touching it less and less, and now it's starting to tingle. All right? Where is it? There it is. All right? Now, if I take my shoe off and do that, or pee on it, I'd be kicked out of this conference. <laughs> Okay, now if I can measure volt, so I'm measuring voltage here. I've got 3.2 thousand volts. I'm going to measure the voltage on the ground rod. 1.2 thousand volts. 1.7 thousand volts. You shouldn't have any voltage on your ground rod. So I can actually touch this this ground rod and get shocked. Let me 
should at least convert that to a little piece of copper. Yeah, so you really want to galvanize, yeah, or something like that. Galvanize something, just pound it deep into the ground. The next question is, you know, pound, galvanize. push it in with a hand and move the rod. <laughs> I almost did something really stupid here. I almost picked up that ground rod. Oh, that, <laughs> that might have been okay, but I'm not going to try it, right? We'll do it once. But, oh, oh, oh. Okay, I am okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> There's enough. It's still on there. We have a couple, a couple ground rounds. I am going to get shocked. Oh, man. We're this learning. is all set up this way to show us yeah, what we not did to this do, right? Exactly. That's right. Well, thanks, Chris. We had yeah, to go look job. for our bad one. You know, if you're going to work with hot fences, I mean, because... The way to really save time is just to work with hot fences. <laughs> you won't fall asleep that way. Yeah. Why is the fencer inside of the fence, Christian? No reason. Because because when the coop was on this side, this back up, please. It was outside. This morning. That's not hot yet. It will be. Okay, so now if you have a hot in one hand and a cold in the other, you gotta go fast. <laughs> ah! Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm holding enough plastic, so I'm okay. Okay, so I'm hooked up there. And now we're going to see how good his fence conducted electricity all the way around. And my, my, my fence tester is about to beep because I'm holding it for 15 seconds with no pulse. Just beep. All right. Now we know. Now we know. So when it beeps, then you got to hold it another 15 seconds. Until it beeps again. Yep. So either. We have disconnected corners, which I doubt it because these guys made a, like, you can tell they're, they're paying attention here. Or we, we have enough breaks in the fence that this is completely <laughs> try cold. Try it on another, try it on the main line where you just had it in your hand. Is there, okay, what's the juice over there? No, on the, yeah, yeah on that. Is there anything? Zero. Coming? Nothing. So now if you're going to do this. You listen to the pulse. Yeah. I can't hear it. You guys are too, being too loud. <laughs> now, if I didn't get that touch together in time, yeah, I'd have screamed. <laughs> but like that's only important when you're working like way out in the field and you don't want to run all the way back home to get the fence center. No, I'm sorry, to turn off your fence center, guys. So if you can just work in between the pulses. Do you recommend? You're gonna be fast. It's like quick draw, on the draw. <laughs> Do you recommend keeping that on on slow? Oh, well, it's not on slow. Okay, so there's um, there's a number of different. Um, this particular energizer has a number of different settings. So we have the circle, which is off. We have the battery symbol, which means that it is gonna pulse however many bars the battery is holding no wait yeah 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 however many however many like so it, it can measure the volts of this battery and tell you if the battery's high or low so that's just a, that's just a a nice easy way to figure out if you're now the battery remember that has nothing to do with your with your with your fence voltage output these are two separate systems that just get powered together then we have turtle which pulses once every two seconds then we have the sun, which pulses um, fast during daylight and slow during nighttime to save some energy. Then we have the moon, which pulses fast at night, slow during the day to save some energy. But if you have a solar panel, like daytime, you have all the energy you want. And then we have rabbit, which pulses fast all the time. So I, I might be getting too into the weeds here. If you have your solar panel directly connected to your battery without a solar controller, um, it'll it'll drain the battery at night more up more than it would if you just disconnected it. So you can buy like a little twenty dollar solar controller um, from Amazon. Yeah, Amazon has them, and they're terrible instructions. <laughs> I have a <laughs> so one with the solar guard. The sun guard is a good one. That has actually the instructions on the the. Oh All right, now, who, how many of you want to hold hands and grab the fence, and I'll take off my shoes and go to the end? <laughs> hey, can I, I don't think so. so. Oh. This is, I don't know if this is, um, like, wives' tale. I was always told, you never put a bat, like, 
So that battery on steel on the ground, but on the ground is the worst because it pulls energy out of the battery. Does it? I, I was always told that you always put a piece of wood underneath the battery because, huh. and the, the worst is concrete. So concrete will huh. pull a charge out of a battery. Really? The second is bare ground, and then steel on bare ground is the worst. So you, like what I would have done is put a piece of two by, two by 12 or something underneath it to insulate it from the ground. I did not know that. Better battery life. Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. it, it takes out the- uh, That's good to know. The cold cranking. I knew it, that on blows the cranking. Yeah. yeah. I've got a question which is, <clears throat> I think, key to this whole conversation. How effective <clears throat> is this fence <clears throat> in protecting- That's a good question. Your birds. So we had a coyote yesterday at the next house stuck inside the fence. And it was raining yesterday morning, about a half an inch. It goes oh. right here. Right here. Uh, it was a young coyote, but it was like particularly effective. And this house, this chicken coop, when it was by the, the road a few days ago, there was raccoons galore. Um, and so, no, it's not super effective. Um, and so Matt did do, you know, he just, he, he told me before we walked out here, he's doubled the voltage out here since he's been playing with the wires. And it was all, it was all corrosion. That's all it was. It was corrosion or, or bad connectors, bad yeah. connections. So a galvanized ground rod is is, is fine. No yeah. So changing from material type to material type is bad. That causes gal galvanic effect, and like it'll 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 oxidize the connection. So if you the more you can stay similar metals, I mean you know steel wire is all galvanized steel. So use galvanized everything if you can. <coughs> I mean, these little connectors are galvanized steel, you know? Um, yeah. If uh, I could make one suggestion on, the, on a totally portable system, like this is what we use. I have typically three ground rods per setup, and I switch to, I use their concrete stakes, like forming concrete, just because they're a, a nice heavy duty stake that we can pound in and pull out. It doesn't bend and uh, easily pushable, and then I, I took a cheap set of jumper cables and I split them. And so there I have one that's maybe 10 foot and one that's eight foot. So then I, I daisy chain those. And that's a, and the reason I use the jumper cables is because it's like a heavier clip, a heavier wire, just for the constant picking up and moving and stepping on these little, I broke a lot of those little ones. And, and I found that in, so, and then you can on the steel, you can just give it a little little like this and kind of cut through the corrosion and get yeah. steel to steel and uh and there's <coughs> dissimilar metals in that setup but we're moving it so often that you know it's kind of the trade-off and i found that that's a easy way to even if you had two more pieces of rebar here and you just bought a cheap cheap yeah. set of jumper cables and split yeah. them there it's easy enough to okay. to spread it out you know and it's not like a Reinvent them. It's something that can just get tossed in. I'll give Christian a big hand for being a good sport. If he came to my farm, he could pick on me for everything.